Head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices and you can sign up for product alerts. Miami is a tile land game for two to four players where each round you'll be drafting from a pool of different tiles. You'll be placing them on your board, matching up the type of item in the right row, but also making sure that you cannot place an item in that column for the rest of the round. And you'll be getting points equal to the number of items on the tile times the level, like three times one is one. But you might be setting yourself up for a level two tile in the same spot, so two times two, now you're at four, it escalates as the game goes on. And as the game goes on, you're trying to get to the fifth level for certain rows of different features, because the first player to get a specific item on the fifth row gets bonus points that nobody else can get for that item. The game will end after a specific amount of rounds depending on the players, and you'll get majority points if you have the most of different items in a row compared to other players, or second most all the way down through all the different rows. And at that point, whoever has the most points is the winner. And there's five different mini expansions that you can mix in, one or more of these, to make the game have even more depth and replayability. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Miyami is a pleasant, relaxing game and theme has a lot of cleverness of the, both the rows and the column restrictions as the game goes on. You're constantly weighing short-term versus long-term goals. You can have a lot of interactions with players if you want and hate draft tiles if they really want. You're constantly setting yourself up for future placements. You're fighting for majorities. You're racing for the fifth level bonuses and the expansions, mini expansions that you can add and take the game to the next level. On the negative side of things, the empty green spaces on the tiles make the game look a little uglier than it normally would be because the rest of it's beautiful. I wish they would have done something else with those empty spots. And the game, game scales a little oddly between four players and two players having a wide disparity of how many tiles you place in the game. But overall, the game is fantastic. It's, I'm sad that I overlooked this game because it's a couple years old, but it's a Michael Kiesling classic Get a, and it got a saxophone serenade. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today is going to be a nice, relaxing, soothing day as we put together a beautiful garden. And today we're going to be doing that by laying tiles. This is a Michael Kiesling design. This comes from Haba. Let me show you how this works. I'll see you on the other side. In Miyabi, each player has their own player board and you're going to be building up garden pieces all the way up to multiple levels. Because each round, a certain amount of pieces of different sizes are going to be placed out depending on the amount of players. This is like a two-player game. And so each uh, player will take one of these pieces, drafting them, and placing them on their player board. Uh, and so each round is going to be about six turns long. So let's say I take this piece. Because it is of this type of uh, specific item that's going to be in our garden, this needs to be in this row. So I could place this any, anywhere sort of like this right now. Now where I do place it though, wherever the column is with this, the lantern goes here. What this means is for the rest of the five turns this round, I will not be able to place anything else that has the feature in this column. So you'll continue doing this, drafting different tiles. Now, scoring is a little interesting, is when you place this here, you're going to get points equal to the level of the tile. This is a level one tile, because it's the first one there, uh, times the amount of things you see there. So this is going to be three times one for three points. For these two, this one has got me two points, and this has gotten two points because it's two times one. And as you go up points, you're going to be going up this little track here. And when you get to 50, you'd come back and you increment this. And this is keeping track of the rounds of the game. Now let's say it looked like this was my last move of the round because I can only place a lantern here. And let's say I have this piece and I go like this. So because this is on the second level, and anytime you place something on the second level, there has to be supporting on everything that you place it on. Like it can't hang off an edge or this uh, couldn't be empty in the middle. You can't like make a bridge. It all has to be supported. Now here I have three, because there's three fish in this pond, times the level, two. So this would have gotten me six points, and that would have been the end of my round. At the end of the round, you simply clear all these off, and you'll get all sorts of new tiles uh, in to draft from. 
and the first player marker will pass to the next player. So as the rounds go on, certain parts are going to be building faster than others just because of the nature of how you place the pieces. But if at any point in time you have placed and it's the fifth level, you'll get a bonus. Now since the piece we put down was this, we would get this. It'd be seven points. Now it's a race because once we've taken the seven points from this, from being the first player to place one of these on the fifth level, no one else can get it for that specific uh, item and so you'll see that there's different points you know the higher you go up the more points it is and you keep doing this until all of the rounds are over depending on the amount of players and then you'll look at each of these and you'll look at the majority i have one two three four five six showing if i have the most from any players i'll get 15 points if i'm in second place i'll get seven you'll do the same for every one of these and whoever's the most points at the end of the game is the winner and you play four five or six rounds for four three and two players the game also comes with five mini expansions. Here's three of them. Now, if you use this, and you can use one or two or three or all of them if you want for absolute brain burner, but I recommend playing with like one or two of them. And here it says in each row or column, if you have exactly seven items, you'll get seven points for each of those. This is for your single largest spot that has all sort of, uh, you know, uh, items there. You'll get a point for each of those. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points. This one's kind of doing the opposite. Your single largest contiguous area that's blank, you'll get two points for each of those. So it really makes you change how you place your pieces. These other two are a little more advanced. This one has a frog. You get a silver frog and before or after your turn, it can jump. It can jump to the same level or one level higher and it can't be on top of any actual item. It has to be blank spots that it's jumping to and it'll get points equal to the level that it's on. Once it gets to the fourth level, it turns on the, to gold and you continue getting points for the level it's on, but now it can jump onto actual items like that. Now these are Zen tiles, actually 16 of them in the game. There's five that you can choose from. So you have five to choose from at any given time. And when you choose to place it on your turn, you move a lantern as normal, you'll get a point for this. Now you can never build on top of it. It always has to be on the bottom. And then if you ever end up filling it in so it's completely surrounded, you'll get a point for everything, including that. One, two, three, four, five in that case. But you can never cover this up. And you can't add another one of these until it's completely surrounded like that. And that's pretty much all the different ways you can play. All right, let's talk about what I liked about the game. The game is a pleasant and relaxing game and theme. You're, you're building all these nice little gardens up. Uh, and it's just a pleasant game to play. Uh, the game has a lot, it's, it's got this cleverness of the rows and the columns and their restrictions where you can only put certain features in certain rows but once you've done that, that that round, you can no longer put a feature in that column. And it has this sort of, it's very clever where it's simple mechanisms, but it definitely has some thinkiness to it where you're thinking both now and later. You're constantly weighing those long-term versus short-term goals. Do I want to just put this here now and get the, you know, the eight or 10 or 12 or 16 points? Or do I want to really like put things around the edges around of this so I can set this up for later because I want to go for majorities over here. I want to be the first to get five uh, on a fifth level over here. So you're constantly weighing those long-term term versus short-term goals. And that's always fun in the game. Uh, you could definitely hate draft in this game where you can look at what a player needs next to you. It's right downstream from you and say, oh my gosh, they could really use this tile. They're going to get the fifth level of this, or this is really going to help them right here. Um, I don't really need it, but I could use it, I guess. Maybe set something up for later. Boom, take it. Uh, it can have this in this game, even though it's a relaxing game. You could play it kind of cutthroat, or you could just really focus in on your own thing. Totally up to you, whatever your play style is. But you can do that, and there can be player interaction in that way. Uh, you, you're constantly setting up for future placements where you're like, okay, so I'm going to be able to place here and here, so I need to like support this over here because next round if I get one of these long pieces, I can place it here. This will be a ton of points here. So you're constantly doing that type of thing. I like that aspect you're fighting for majorities you're looking at other players boards you look at your board you're like oh i have seven of these they have eight of these last round this one's gonna be worth 15 points if i get the most so let's focus on that and things like that and then you see what comes up right so fighting for majorities is fun you're also racing to be the first to be the fifth level on some of those things for the big bonuses and the expansions really change the end game decisions uh, and even during the game, some of them too, but like as you get to the last few rounds, usually you're just trying to build up, build up, build up, and you have this formula you're trying to do. But with those expansions, it changes that because normally you're like, I would put this here, 
but I don't want to do that because I've got this perfectly at seven this way and seven this way. That's going to be 14 points. If I put this one tile here, it's going to get me 12, but I'm going to lose seven of these other points. So it really changes the way that you think. Uh, and it makes you approach the game in different and unique ways without making the game overly cluttered. So I love the expansions here. I mean, if this wasn't here, I would have said this game is good. It's fine. It's great. It's got a lot of replayability. It's puzzly, but I would have I would have liked to have seen something little extra things that you can mix in to make it an advanced game. That's what this does for you. And there's five of them. Great job with that. Uh, on the negative side of things, the player boards, they're basically like paper, like they're hard paper, but it's like it's like cardstock. It's not like a normal board. I wish those were a little thicker. Um, the empty green spaces on the tiles, it makes the game look a little ugly. Uh, I think they could have done a lot more interesting things with the empty spots of the tiles. Still made it look clean and empty, but maybe there were some nice things to look at. You know, you look at some of the King Domino tiles, for example, uh, and there's some interesting and unique things to look at on the tiles, but they still look nice, even though some of them have somewhat empty looking things. I wish the art was a little different on that. And the game kind of sort of scales a little oddly, where like with four players, uh, you play a different amount of rounds, but like with four players, you're just placing 24 tiles, where in two players, you're placing 36 tiles. So you can get a lot more done with the two player game. And I get that there's not enough tiles to play a certain amount of rounds with four players uh, and things like that. But it just seems like the game scales a little odd in that regards, where I would have liked to have had the same amount of turns with the same amount of, you know, regardless of the player count. I know that changes would change the game time and things like that, but there definitely is sort of, you know, if, if, if you want to feel like you have, you can get a ton done, the two player version you're going to like the best. If you want it to be like really hard to sort of get to that fifth level, make it a really tough challenge, then the four player might be one you like. But either way, they feel different. I wish they feel a little bit more more like each other. But overall, this game is fantastic. It's uh, it's one of those games that came out what, a couple years ago, and I just sort of overlooked. And uh, I got, I, uh, I actually, a friend of mine, a designer, Mike Fitzgerald, the designer of Baseball Highlights 2045, told me this is one of his recent most favorite games. And so I went online and, and got it. And uh, I, I'm really impressed with it. It's one of those ones that I'm sad that I missed, but I'm glad that I finally found it and that I'm hopefully able to help you find it. And I do realize it's harder to get. So um, this is a, a fantastic game and because that's getting a saxophone serenade. So here we go. <laughs> Lucky Duck Games has four new games available now. In the Court of Miracles, you lead a guild of beggars, scheme with sinister plots, and use trickery to build your own renown in an attempt to take over 16th century Paris. Baron Voodoo is an abstract strategy game involving the collection of thematic soul dice, and it made my top 10 most anticipated releases at Essen Spiel this year. Kingdom Rush Rift in Time is a tower defense with epic heroes that includes a campaign and an infinite replayability mode. It was hugely popular on Kickstarter, raising over $1 million. Chronicles of Crime 1400 is a standalone follow-up to the award-winning Chronicles of Crime, where you'll be solving four unique crimes in medieval Paris. These are all available in stores now, and you can learn more and order them at LuckyDuckGames.com.